in this video we are going to discuss about memory reference instructions memory reference instructions are useful in order to perform operations on operands operands will locate in the main memory uh, let us see the memory reference instructions one by one the first instruction is and instruction here uh, and instruction can be executed when decoder's output d0 is active and uh, next here the timing signals t0 t1 t2 and t3 specifies uh, fetch fetching instruction decoding instruction and determining the type of the instruction so the next two timing signal is t4 so during decoder's output t0 and the timing signal t4 this and instruction will be executed so and means perform and operation on memory board and accumulator but directly we can't perform and operation on memory board so we have to transfer the content of memory board to data register and in the next clock pulse and operation will be performed on data register and accumulator so first the contents of the memory the contents of the memory is specified by m of ar where ar specifies address register m specifies the operand at that address so that is to be transferred to data register we know that we have sequence counter on sequence counter we can apply three inputs the first input is clock pulse the second input is increment the third input is clear input here in, a, in each clock pulse we will apply clock pulse as well as increment so next here a clock pulse will be applied as well as this increment control input will be enabled so whenever those two are enabled then we will get the next timing signal so in the next clock pulse decoder's output is d0 only but whenever this increment control input is enabled uh, the next timing signal the next clock pulse will become t5 so in the next clock pulse and operation will be performed on data register and accumulator so and the result is transferred to the accumulator and operation is performed on accumulator and data register and the result is transferred to the accumulator next here we have to enable the clear input of the sequence counter so whenever we enable the clear input of the sequence counter then in the next transition if we apply the clock pulse uh, then it will start from the timing signal t0 so once again fetching of the instruction will be done decoding will be done as well as type of the instruction will be determined okay so sequence counter will be clear to zero so yes c r o g o so that in the next transition so the next timing signal will become t not so that is about and instruction now let's see about yard instruction so yard instruction is executed when the decoder's output d1 is active and instruction is executed when decoder's output d not is active whereas yard instruction is executed when the decoder's output d1 is active next to t0 t1 t2 and t3 are for fetching decoding and determining the type of the instruction so the next timing signal is t4 t4 so during decoder output t1 and timing signal t4 this add operation will be performed here add means add the content of accumulator to memory board but we can't perform add operation directly with the memory board so we need to why because here uh, uh, we have yarder and logic circuit as well as accumulator yarder and logic circuit or alu uh, in a common bus system uh, yarder and logic circuit or alu resides between uh, data register and accumulator so that means yarder and logic circuit or uh, alu performs the operations on the accumulator and data register so that's why here what we are doing is we are transferring the contents of the memory to the data register and on the data register and accumulator we are performing the operations because yarder and logic circuit or alu 
performs the operation on data register and accumulator in a common bus system. So first what we have to do? We have to transfer the contents of the memory to data register. So every time what we will do? We will enable clock pulse as well as increment control input. Every, in every inspection we have to perform those two. So that's why we are not writing those two explicitly. Next, in the next clock pulse, that means uh, if we apply clock pulse as well as uh, increment input, then we will get next to timing signal that is T5. So during decoder's output T1 and timing signal T5. So what we have to do? The add operation should be performed on data register and accumulator. And the content will be transferred to the accumulator. So add operation is performed on accumulator and data register. And the content is transferred to the accumulator. And if there is any output carry, C out, if there is any output carry, that output carry will be transferred to a flip-flop called E. E stands for extended flip-flop. Next, after that, we have to clear the sequence counter. So that means we have to enable the clear input of the sequence counter so that uh, in the next transition, in the next clock pulse, again the timing signal will start from T0. So first decoding will be done, fetching will be done, decoding will be done. Like that, the process will continue. Now let's see about uh, LDA. LDA stands for load memory word to accumulated. Load memory word to accumulator. But uh, from the bus, there is no connection to the accumulator. Bus, uh, bus output doesn't connect to the input of the accumulator. So that's why we have to transfer memory word content to data register. And from the data register, we can transfer the content to the accumulator. Okay. So first, this uh, this instruction is executed when the decoder's output D2 is active. And the first timing signal here is T4. T4. So what we have to do? We have to load memory word to accumulator. But that is not possible. Why? Because there is no connection between bus to the accumulator in the common bus system. So that memory word will be transferred to the data register. So here we will apply clock pulse as well as uh, Increment control input will be enabled. So the next two timing signal will become D to T5. So in this uh, clock plus in this transition, what will happen? The contents of the data register will be loaded into accumulator. So load memory word to accumulator. Next in this clock pulse, SC will be cleared. So that in the so that again the process will start from T0 timing signal onwards. So this is about LDA. Now let's see about STA, the next instruction. STA stands for store accumulator into memory. Here accumulator can place uh, data onto the common bus and from the common bus we can transfer the data into the memory by enabling the right control input. So in one clock pulse we can perform this operation. So here the decoder's output is D3, the timing signal is T4. So what is STA? Store the content of accumulator into memory. Store the content of accumulator into memory. As well as we have to clear the sequence counter. We have to enable clear sequence counter. We have to enable this clear control input. So that the next clock pulse, the next two timing signal will start from T0 onwards. So next one is BUN. BUN stands for branch unconditionally, jump unconditionally. So without checking any condition, if we go from one, one statement to another statement, then it is called as BUN, branch unconditionally. So branch means jump unconditionally. So this instruction is executed when the decoder's output D4 is active. The first two timing signal is T4. Let us assume that here uh, address register AR is transferred to the program counter. So without checking any condition, address register is transferred to the program counter as well as sequence counter will be clear to 0 so that the next two timing signal will start from T0 onwards and the next one is BSA BSA stands for branch and save written address BSA stands for branch and save written address so this is executed when the decoder's output D5 is active as well as the timing signal T4 is active. Uh, let's take an example here. Uh, let me have uh, a diagram like this. 
let here the instruction number is 10 at the 10th instruction at the 10th address we have an instruction called here indirect bit is 0 so it means that it is direct address let the instruction is bsa so branch and save written address let here the address is 100 the next instruction will be at the next instruction will be at this 11th address next here here the point is when we are executing the 10th instruction uh, we got a subroutine call subroutine is nothing but a function so whenever a function call occurs then what we have to do we have to save the return address in a, an address field so here what is the return address here we are executing the 10th instruction so here the return address must be 11 so this 11 should be stored in some other register so here what is this 11 this 11 is nothing but program counter why because program counter always contains address of next instruction to be executed so we have to store program counter in some address program counter in some address here what is that address field here here the address field is 100 so in 100 store the program counter 11 so whenever the statement is executed here what is the program counter the next instruction is nothing but 11 so this 11 will be stored in m of ar so what is address register here address field is 100 so in m of 100 this 11 will be executed as well as let us assume that subroutine is available yet one or one instruction on which. Here what is address register? Address register means 100. Whereas subroutine is available yet 1 or 1. So how to get 1 or 1 from the 100 by incrementing the address register value. So AR plus 1 arrow AR. So that means what will happen now? Now address register will be at 1 or 1. So all the instructions in the subroutine are executed. Let us assume that in this subroutine the last instruction is 1. Let the instruction is 1 and let here the address field is 100 here bun stands for branch unconditionally so there is no need to check any condition this one specifies that it is indirect address indirect address means this address contains address of the operand so this is not the effective address if we go to the 100 then we will get the effective address so we have to go to the 100 so this 100 contains effective address so what is the effective address 11 so we have to load that 11 into the pro program counter so in the next class pulse that is d5 t5 what we have to do is we have to load this address register content what is that 11 11 should be loaded to the program counter so that now the execution will start from the 11th instruction onwards so bsa stands for branch and save return address so that means the return address will be saved and jump to the subroutine here we are saving that written address into an instruction called 11. So 100, we are storing that written address 11 in address register. So that's why we use this statement, m of, arrow, m of AR arrow program counter. So that that 11 will be stored in that uh, m of AR. Next from 101 onwards, we have subroutine. So from in order to get 101, we have incremented AR. So now AR will be at 101. So all the statements in the subroutine will get executed. The last statement is 1 BUN and it. So it specifies that it is indirect address. BUN stands for branch unconditionally. So without checking any condition, if you go to the 100 location, then it will give the effective address. So we have go to that address. So it is getting the, it is giving the effective address. So we have to load this address to the program counter. Address is loaded to the program counter. Here we have to create the selection input. So that if we apply the clock pulse as well as enable enable the increment control input of the sequence counter then the next timing signal will, will become t naught now let's see the last instruction that is isz 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 stands for increment and skip if zero we have to increment the contents of the memory we have to increment the content of the memory and skip the next instruction if the memory word is zero okay increment the content of the memory word and skip the next instruction if it is zero but here the problem is uh, memory has only two control inputs write and read we can't perform increment operation on the memory so for that first we have to transfer that memory content that memory word to data register 
and then in the next clock pulse increment data register and in the next clock pulse load that data register to the memory now check whether data register content is zero or not if it is zero then skip the next instruction by incrementing the program counter value uh, let us write those instructions one by one here this uh, this instruction is executed when decoder's output d6 is acting and the first timing signal is t4 here we we can't perform incrementation operation on the memory because memory has only two control inputs write and read so first we have to transfer the contents of the memory into data register next these two control inputs will be enabled so we will get the next timing signal d6 t5 so in this clock pulse what we have to do is just increment control input increment control enable increment control input of the data register why because data register has increment control input also data register contains load input clear input and increment control input next these two will be applied clock pulse as well as increment next we will get the next timing signal d6 t6 so in this load that data register content into the memory so now what is happening we have incremented the contents of the memory we have incremented the content of the memory so next what we have to do we have to check whether it contains zero or not so directly write the instruction if dr is equal to zero so this is nothing but assignment operator only this is not a programming language for equality we use uh, for checking the condition here we use a single is equal to there is no problem here uh, skipping is nothing but don't execute the next instruction so increment the program counter so if you increment the program counter then the next instruction won't execute okay so if dr is equal to 0 that means after uh, incrementation is done skip if it is zero so if dr is equal to 0 then skip the next instruction so how we are skipping the next instruction by incrementing the program counter value as well as sc arrow 0 so that sequence counter will be clear so this is about memory reference instructions in the next video we will discuss about register reference instructions